Welcome to Ability Fierce. I'm Michael Astor, and today we have as our guest Bill Bader from Disabled in Action. And we're going to talk about what Disabled in Action does and why there aren't more young people coming out to the Disabled in Action meeting. So, Bill, how are you? Hi. Good to see you again. Great to be here today. It was really great to see you at Disabled in Action. And I really like when you came in and you were talking, I said, I identified your energy. It sort of like sounded like my energy. So that's why I, I reached out to you. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about Disabled in Action and what you do there? Well, Disabled in Action is a 50-year-old disability rights organization. We're probably the oldest active grassroots uh, disability rights organization in the United States. Um, we're unique in a couple of ways. We're unique in that we're a self-advocacy organization um, and that we are a, are a cross-disability organization, meaning that we represent people, we fight for the rights of people with disabilities, all disabilities mental disabilities, physical disabilities, sensory disabilities. We, we try, mm -hmm. we don't always do it, but we try to cover the whole game. Now, is that difficult because like a lot of- Yes. Issues, yeah. Could you talk about some of those difficulties? Um, disabled people are the largest minority mm -hmm. in the world. Um, it's the most diverse uh, protected class of citizens in the United States. Um, every, black, white, green, brown, rich, poor, gay, straight. Nobody ex escapes. Everybody yeah. can be dis yeah. disabled. And so we, we're, we're incredibly dis diverse. Mm -hmm. um, our disabilities uh, cover a wide range of areas. So yeah, it's, it's hard to be under one umbrella, but you, you, we are the disabled people of the, of the world. But, but are there some concrete um, goals that, like besides, I mean, I know it's a huge amount of issues that the disabled face just getting uh, to the table to talk even, you know what I mean? Um, but it, is there, are there any short term or the campaigns that disabled in action like that we could say this is something that you're trying to do and how how we might do it? Uh, what are you you're saying? What are the issues that we're we're yeah, I mean, focusing on at this point? Mm -hmm. Transportation. Okay. Um, wheelchair accessible taxis are. Uh, you know, we're, we've been trying to get that to happen for years and years and years and years. Um, that goes back to the my the beginning of my association with disabled in action. Mm -hmm. um, we are at a point now where we're we might by 2020, two years from now or a year from now get um, a 50% compliance on the on the yellow taxi fleet, which is great, except mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, the taxis are going out of business because of Uber, Uber and, right. and, and the, the online ride ride hail services. So it's, that's one issue that we're working on. Um, paratransit, um, um, uh, accessoride. Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity for yellow cabs to get more business because the city spends a half a billion dollars a year on uh, on a service accessory mm -hmm. that is awful and it doesn't I work agree. well. Um, there's a project to get accessory service into the yellow cab fleet, which would be good for the yellow cabs and it would be good for paratransit. Well, there is a, there's a pilot but program. There are pilot already programs. has that where you, it's a curb app. Yeah, it's a pilot program. Yeah, it's not yet really really running. Um, so the wheelchair accessible taxis are transportation. Um, what else? Yeah. Uh, what else in transportation? Taxis and that. Subways. Yeah. Ah, subways. Right. Um, uh, what you're talking about is universal design. Yes, mm -hmm. you want you want subway access and elevators and all that stuff. It's it's not just for disabled people. Mm -hmm. It's not just for people in wheelchairs. It's for the moms with strollers. It's for people coming from the airport with their big luggage. Mm -hmm. And so, disability rights used to be. Um, wheelchair ramps, braille signage, and uh, sign language interpreters. Mm -hmm. For me, the, in the 21st century, disability rights is going to be about bigger issues, not just that affect me and my wheelchair, but affect everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole universal design thing. In other words, people want to get on the subway, but it's not just disabled people, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, universal design. For me, 20, uh, disability rights in the 21st century is people realizing that the social safety net is something real important. You know, the the 2020 election is going to be there's going to be a lot of talk about Medicare for all and and universal coverage. I hope everybody focuses on universal coverage and not just 
the one solution of uh, Medicaid for all, mm -hmm. but there are lots of ways to get to universal coverage. And we've got to think pragmatically. We were talking about universal design. Yeah. Some, uh, a friend of mine works with design, and he said that like, if you look at the problem of making something accessible, it helps everybody. Like that, that making something accessible suddenly opens it up not just to the disabled, but it solves other problems that able people have. And then I was talking to another activist who liked the term temporarily able-bodied, because if you live long enough, you're not going to be as able as you... That's that's the concept that everybody com everybody comes to disability, right? Which is a fairly radical, you know. Not everybody does, but mm -hmm. you know, most of us get there on mm -hmm. some level. Yeah, um, uh, they, I, I the temporarily non-disabled people. I I don't know. It, it's a bit of a radical stretch for I, me. I like the thing to say temporarily able able bodied. But it's it's but you know that you're baiting somebody with that too. Well, you're making you could be making a certain point that yeah. many of us come to disability. Yeah. Um, there, but but that's an important point to make. Yeah, but there's yeah. also the concept concept of temporarily disabled or mm -hmm. temporary disability. I remember Bill Clinton um, was playing with a golf player or something, and he either broke or badly sprained his ankle and was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, he said, I, I, now I know what it's like to be disabled. And I, I fell over laughing. It's like, you have no concept. You, you have take a sprained ankle. But then again, it's temporary disability. Well, it's on Thanksgiving. My son came home. He went off. I put him in a car to go back to university. And um, my daughter calls me. She broke her foot cheerleading. So I had one mobility impaired kid leave and another mobility impaired. And I had all this stuff. I have a big bicycle. I could take her to school on the bicycle. We, we bungee corded the crutches to the back and stuff like that. But if I hadn't had Nick, I wouldn't have been able to, to I wouldn't have had all these solutions prepared. But then again, you know, we missed the elevator. At the, we live right next to the subway stop and it, we have to go two stops to get to the nearest one with an elevator. It, Accessibility helps everybody. It's right. the whole concept of universal design. It's not just about me mm -hmm. in my wheelchair. We'll be, be we'll be benefited by moving towards a more accessible, by more universal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here. do a lot of things like it took about two people to get me up on this stage <laughs> and it's it's like so someone has to follow me everywhere I go so it's like having your own personal stock I want to be uh, a comedian which I would say is a risky job for anybody even if you're functionally able I remember when I told my dad this and his response was you better be good which, I mean, he's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, right so. That's what I'm here for anyway. <laughs> Behind you, like, bum, 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 bum. I'm coming for you, Nick. I'm coming to open that door for you. There's a couple of plan B's. There's always good to have a plan B, right? I think that because I'm so animate about like physically disabled people and physically disabled rights, I could always become a lawyer. That's why I'm trying to do political science because it's a good stepping stone for that. <laughs> I hate this kind of what I like to call a stay in your lane mentality, which is kind of like go to a school with uh, uh, kids with physical disabilities and uh, you'll be fine there because they're just like you. And you think about it and you go, well, there's nobody out in the world like me, so I might as well give in. And I think that that's a very dangerous mentality. If you go to a typical school with typically functioning children, your network tends to um, be broader. Also, the standards are higher because if I'm 
I'm uh, put on a standard like as same as regular kids, then I will try harder to achieve the goals that they're achieving grade wise, school wise, and even socially. And I'm curious to see if I lived on a college campus and I was forced to kind of interact with those students all the time. If they would see me more as an equal and they'd be willing to go through that hassle and do more advent adventurous things as than, you know, just hang out at school. I really love roller coasters. There's just one problem. Every time I get on a roller coaster, I tense up and my legs shoot up and I look like I'm flying out of the right place. Which is not good. I'm not that as functional as I look, mm -hmm. right? So like because I walk around with a walker, I think people assume a lot of what I, I could do a lot more than I can sometimes at school, right? I'm much slower, but I think that people tend to see me as kind of like a warrior, disabled kid in a sense, like someone who pushes past the limits. Nobody's gonna put you on a roller coaster if they think you're gonna die halfway through it, right? At least no same person. I want to be a comedian because A, I think I'm funny, um, and B, I think that disabled people kind of need a, a role model to like break out of their shells. And I know this is egotistical because I want to be that role model, but I think I could be that role model. That's all I I went to the disabled action and meeting. I'm going to a lot of these things. I just see that there's a meeting. I go, I try to talk to people. I try to see if I could video. Uh, the privacy issue we were discussing before has been a stumbling block and we could come back to that. But what I say is I noticed everyone there was older. There were no young people. What do we do to get young people or are young people somewhere else? This is something that I, it, I've i been, since I, ca I came back, to, I, I was a member of DIA 25 years ago. Um, then I did stupid things like work and, you know. That's, yeah, pretty dumb, yeah. And <laughs> had, to, had to live my life and take care of my family. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm older and basically in, in semi-retirement, I have more time to volunteer and I'm coming back to DIA. Um, and yes, it's a geriatric organization. And I'm the first thing I tried to do was reach out to the CUNY College uh, Consortium of people with, of Students with Disabilities, CC, uh, CCSD, mm -hmm. um, and I've been trying, I've been banging on their door now for about a year saying, hi, can I come to a, a meeting? I'd love to talk about DIA, I'd like to talk about the issues that we have. I would love to hook up with you guys, and I'm not getting any. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's something that I think that we have to, and then, okay, and then this other thing is that it's the largest minority, and I was doing some looking at statistics for, like, Senator Parker's district, where I think we, we live, right? 7% are disabled, and then another 26% or 25% are elderly disabled. So you're talking about 30% of the district needs accessibility, um, and if they voted, if they were weaponized to vote, this could be a very powerful lobby. The problem is that there's also issues with accessibility and voting and um, getting out. And for a lot of these people, it's hard to get out and vote. Can we add voting to the, the list yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. issues that uh, disabled is and action is into? Yes, we've been fighting on this one for years, machines that people can use to vote. The, 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 in other words, someone who can't, who doesn't have the hand dexterity to write, there, you, there, there are machines now in in most polling places in New York State. Lots of other places don't have that. Um, site access is still an issue, mm -hmm. you know, in New York State. So, right. um, yeah, how many, how many, how many? We need more. We need more people to help us with these fights. How many fights can you have at one time? Yeah, I know it's complicated, but what I see and what I'm trying to 
deal with. I see there's a lot of good law, good, good laws, but then there's a lot of good loopholes um, too for the laws. The, the laws that exist on disability, the ADA, the mm -hmm. Americans with Dis Disabilities Act, has only one enforcement mechanism, mm -hmm. and that's a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know, right. there is there is no ADA police. Right, and when you then a lawsuit's complicated for a lot of reasons. Um, you need money to in institute them. But, but here's an interesting one that a uh, father came to me and he said, my son has been banned from a local swimming pool. And he says, I'm a lawyer, I'm suing them, I'm gonna win, but, that, but it's gonna take time to win. And that next summer comes, my son can't swim anywhere or can't swim in the neighborhood. And so he called me to say, can we use, can you use your media contacts and stuff to, to bring pressure so I could get my son swimming this summer. So even though the law will eventually come through, this kid is developing. You don't want to have your kid for a summer that he can't swim if that's what he loves to do, just because people are don't understand that he is differently abled. You know what I mean? So th that's the problem. When you have to sue somebody, you're already in trouble. Yeah. You know, if you look at uh, a lot of the stuff that the, with the insurance and with the services that, that are available, they say, oh, and here's the appeals process. As soon as you have to embark on an appeals process, um, it, it's going to be a nightmare. And this is the, the point I'm trying to bring across is timeliness is important. It's not okay to say, wait a year or wait five years. Especially when you're talking about kids. Yeah, exactly, because they're developing. And that, I mean, what happened with my son was he graduated high school, and I'm talking to the OPWDD. I hate acronyms and, and initials, but I'll say they're, they're the Office of, uh, people with the event. And they're like, well, maybe he could take a gap year. And I was like, no, a gap year is you choose to, I'm going to go to Europe before I go to, you know, or I'm going to intern here, I'm going to do this. But having him sit on the couch for a, a year because the bureaucracy can't, is, isn't nimble enough, is very disturbing to a kid and to a family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm trying to fight that. I'm trying to get the concept of timeliness and dignity. The services should be provided with dignity because oftentimes the services are there but there ain't no dignity. Yeah, I, I, things are improving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I got hurt a little over 30 years ago, and I can't tell you that sidewalk cuts were rare and hard to find. Um, I will tell you that if you're having trouble finding a sidewalk cut, mm -hmm. um, the, the sidewalk is lower around fire hydrants. Don't ask why. Don't ask me why. It's a good trick. It's the insider tip. And you that, heard it here first on a billion years. <laughs> Not that you need it anymore. <laughs> New York City is, I think, 90-something percent of its sidewalks have, have curb cuts. A lot of them are broken and awful and can't be used, but at least they're there. And we're that's another lawsuit that we're working in federal court. Um, getting There was a settlement in, in the early 90s on sidewalk cuts, and now we're trying to make it better so that they have to be ADA compliant and that they have to be maintained and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but things are getting better. Mm -hmm. And so... Things aren't moving fast enough. I hear you, and I agree with you. And it's we just have to keep on pushing. Right. Well, a lot of disabled people, especially when they get older, stay home. They don't want to go out anymore. When I first got hurt, I had my accessible van so that I could, you know, go places and take my family places. And I don't want to tell you the the circus that I was every time I got into and got out of my van with the lift that would come down. Um, I have a good buddy, T.K. Small, who had a uh, a campaign that he wanted to start um, uh, on dis dis disability employment saying, hire the disabled, they're fun to watch. Um, <laughs> just getting out into the street. And yeah, you, you, it's still today, 30 years later, people still stare at me while I'm getting into my van and the ramp comes out. Um, it, it, it's still a new thing for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I like to tell people that it's kind of like of dealing with Nick, it's kind of like Michael Jackson. You know, we have to prep before we go. We're going to expect people to be looking at us. We, you, you sort of develop a public persona because all eyes are on you. You develop a thick skin for a while. After a while, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's not fun being a the freak in the street, but that's okay. I'm not a freak. But the point is, the more, yeah. But the more people see it, exactly. I think. But this, which brings us to the questions. But I keep running into this privacy, and you were talking about the privacy thing. Like I wanted to see if I could film the, the Disabled in Action meetings. And you said that you'd raise that 
Well, it's something we've started to do. We were talking about how how to get the message out more. Um, there is an organization, uh, ICS, they had an advocacy group, and they used to uh, Facebook Live the meetings, mm -hmm. you know, put, the, put it out there so mm -hmm. that people at home could participate and people could text in, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, and so we started doing that at DIA, and a couple of the board members were like, oh, you can't do that. There are privacy issues. You know, for me, there are ways to get around that, but it's that uh, there are a lot of different attitudes out there about that. Yeah, so they give subsidies to oil companies. Why don't they give subsidies to accessibility? You've never heard of lobbying? Well, we, 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 we live in, I mean, you're, you're getting into real big issues. You're, you're or, or the conservative voices in this country mm -hmm. do an excellent job on marketing and messaging. Mm -hmm. And the more progressive voices do a fairly lousy job. And so it's, it's an orientation of the country. Right. Um, and, and the funny thing, I have this argument with my Republican friends, and we're, get, we're getting off of disability into politics mm -hmm. here. But, uh, yeah, it, it, get, it gets down to that. Uh, it gets down to messaging. And I believe, this is the argument I have with my, my Republican friends. My friend says, where this country is center right, and I'm going, no, the country is actually center left. The electorate, the people who go and vote, the people who participate are center right. And it, it, it's a problem. Yeah, it's also a problem that there's sort of like these, these terms have been framed so much in a business uh, manner. And it's not really pro-business at all because these businesses are becoming bloated and inefficient and they're using their monopoly power instead of being agile. I mean, the whole free market concept is not valid at the, you know, like if you get laid off, it's like, well, you have to adapt. If your company becomes obsolete, they throw all the money to lobby and it's, it's and we're stuck with, with stuff. But what I'm saying is we have a time, we have to change the dynamic. And that's what media advocacy is about is to get there and say, hey, there's a different way to think about it. There's a different way to do it. So in my dream world, it's like, you're disabled, someone comes and says, okay, you're, you need this, 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 and this, and we're gonna get at you in the best way possible, as quickly as possible, boom. And then that's gonna cost money, but you, the, 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 the judgment is on this, the quality of service and not on the cost, not on the budget, changing that um, dynamic. And then if the, state doesn't come through with the things quickly, they should be liable, they should be fined. So that if there's a cause, so, so you don't get the thing like, if I deny your claim three times. It's not working for who? Works for the insurance company. Well, I know, but but that's not who, the, that's where it's, it, it shouldn't be a money making. Um, it's where's your focus? Is the focus on people mm -hmm. or is, is the focus on on the powerful? Right. Um, and that that's where the, the powerful have, the powerful are powerful. Better it's hard to mess with them. Yeah, but they have better messaging, and they and they, they have convinced enough people that that's the way it should work. And in, until the people step up, mm -hmm. the young people, <laughs> young people, please come and and, <laughs> and step up and and help us in our mm -hmm. efforts. Um, I think that, like I said, the fight of disabled people in the future, or the the disability community in the future, is going to be saving the social safety net. Mm -hmm. Do we want to come together and help each other? Because mm -hmm. that's what's, and the, we're the tip of the spear on that. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's the thing. It's like with the, the design issue. The, if you solve the problem of disability in as much as you can, right? But if you you solve it, you solve the bigger problem of society. You know what I mean? One of the bigger, yes. One, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and what should come first? What is the priority? Making sure that business is all set and doing a good job so that money will trickle down. Reagan it doesn't down. work, yeah. Well, it does to a very limited extent. Well, now you look at this. Since <laughs> the 70s, real salaries have just flatlined. This is still the, the United States. Well, uh, we can talk about socialism and capitalism and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, things things work in this country. We're, we're a mainly market-oriented society, and things are geared. Mm -hmm. The power structure is geared to help businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, lack, we're not focusing on people like they do in more of the, the European countries, mm -hmm. like they do in, in other countries. It's a problem. Now that's another thing that interests me is because the insurance 
set up in such a way you don't find like top of the line wheelchairs here or innovative walkers or things that you find in Denmark or Poland or or England because it's sort of like no you have to get this this is what the insurance approves and there's no real market for the alternatives because the the insurance won't approve them but there's a lot of like I've gone to other countries and found amazing adaptive equipment interesting i didn't know that yeah uh, is the israelis are kicking ass with uh because they have a lot of spinal cord injuries they have a lot of battle injuries and you know they're even doing the full body um okay i've seen those pre- yeah. you know so and um here there's no interest in that because the insurance won't pay it and people don't there unless you're wealthy you don't have the money to shell out for some high tech um adaptive device or something like that you're talking about societies that are more focused on people Mm -hmm. and and people come first and business of course needs to be supported but it's it comes second it's we have we have a different philosophy in this country and it's it's causing problems yeah and i think but i think that we we so i guess that's the battle is we have to change the the model to a people first um model and we're going to do it here on ability pierce i'm not kidding you True. <laughs> Tell them. Well, people laughed, laughed at me when I said that I, um, you know, I went through all this uh, to get my son into school, so I'm going to do it so nobody else has to do it. And people laughed uh, about that, but I'm not joking. It's the importance of activism. It's the importance of advocacy. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, yeah, never, uh, Margaret Mead never doubt the power of a few people to change the world because that's the only thing that ever has. Um, yeah, what what you're doing, getting the word out, people advocating, people getting together. The system, um, the, the system doesn't encourage that. The system loves to stay in power. The only thing that's going to change it is people coming together. Mm-hmm. So, thank you for joining us at Ability Pierce. This has been Phil Bader from Defense. Is it- Disabled in action, the defense, well, DIA is Defense Intelligence Agency, but no, disabled in action. And he's looking for young people to come out and join the struggle. I'm also, I want to help with that. I'm trying to get our social media game up and then try to help some of the organizations like DIA get a better social media thing. I want to put these videos out. I want people to see them. Everyone who has something to say is welcome to come on the show. I just it's a loose talk where I learn and you learn because it's not any good if if I learn all this stuff and keep it to myself. I want to cut down the number of people who have to become experts just because they're disabled or their kids are disabled. And so they could focus on living their lives. And that's a real problem today that they sort of assume that you're disabled. You have to become an advocate, a specialist in insurance, a specialist in adaptive equipment, how to access it, and it shouldn't be that way. And it shouldn't be the way it is, and we're going to fix it. It's going to be tough, but you're going to help us, okay? So thank you for watching Ability Fierce. I'm Michael Astor. Thank you, Phil.